Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, you can see I'm progressing right along with the uh, Panther factory that we're working on. It's been a blast. And what I thought I would do on these videos, since there's so much work still to be done, I'm just going to make these short little 15-20 minutes, uh, hopefully every week, till we get the whole project done, because I'll be working on other projects in between. But we've got stacks and stacks of evergreen plastic, and we've been really going to town. I'm going to show you, obviously, in more in depth going forward in this video. I actually forgot to film the intro at the beginning of this video like I normally do. So we're kind of at the end and I realized, oh, I don't have an intro for this. So I'll go through all the different parts that we make up and how we did all the stuff. Uh, my friend Steve from Value Gear came down and brought me a whole bunch of crates and boxes and opens and all kinds of stuff like that that we're going to put all over the dioramas you can see we've started to do here. I've also started to assemble some of the stuff from the uh, Tamiya Italeri set. We're going to use some of the components in that as well, plus any of the extra parts like the extra road wheels, things like that that came with the kit. So uh, it's been a blast so far. I'm really enjoy doing all the, uh, the overhead suspension stuff and still got a lot more to do. But what I thought I'd do today is, like I said, just share with you what we've got so far. So, let's get started on it. Okay, now we're about ready to start working on more of the factory wall and some of the other pieces for it. So I have a, a sheet of styrene that we're going to, that's going to represent the, the back wall here. And we'll, of course, cut this to size. We won't go this particular tall. I'm looking to make it probably about a scale of about 32 feet from the floor. The, we won't actually put a roof on it, so the building is going taller in, uh, in theory, but we're going to do about 30 feet of it. And the reason we chose that is I've taken some of Evergreen's I-beam, and the I-beam is what we're going to use to attach to the wall as well as these pillars right here that are going to go on either side of the vehicle and we'll put all of the cross members that go up on it. And to make that, we've just taken our uh, Evergreen I-beam, taken a little sheet of thick styrene to go on the bottom, and then just taking some of our L-strip right here, cut that to size. And as you can see, we've put it on here. And I have on order, I ran out of them already. I thought I had some more, but some of the Ming bolts that we will put two bolts onto the I-beam and two bolts onto the uh, the base here. Now I gotta do a little bit more sanding on this base right here, cutting that plate's a little rough. But you can see we'll put one on this side. And I've got one other one built right here. That'll go up on it and we will attach this back plate. We're going to cut windows into the back of that as well too. A big square is going to come out. We're going to use some clear styrene to make that up. And I'm probably going to use this square tubing as the back brace. I was noticing on some of the factories they have a uh, like a thick brace that goes up the wall, obviously supporting the building. And then coming away from that, they attached um, either a, a smaller I-beam or another I-beam that we could probably even attach like this. And this will be the piece that will basically hold the I-beams across. Hopefully, oop, let me pull the camera up a little bit. And it'll basically, this will be the supporting I-beam that goes across here and goes and hooks up to the the other member back here and kind of give us this is going to be about the size of our whole complex right here. And then we can work on putting bracing and all that other kind of stuff. And plus, once we have the wall in place and the windows cut out, we can use some, some tubing to go up the wall to represent electrical. Now, I've also gone ahead and taken some of our uh, L stock. And I've gone ahead and made a set of racks for the back. Now, it wasn't just L stock. It was the edge here. We used all kinds of different strips and sheet and kind of lower this back down and this will go up against like the wall here and but we still want to leave enough room for our pillars obviously so we'll probably build a little bit more of that so obviously you can see I've got a lot more ahead of me here so I'm going to start working on the back wall we're gonna cut that to the height we need it and then we're gonna start showing how this gets attached as well as the other I-beams 
that I'm not quite sure if we're just going to attach it directly to it like this or put it out with some cross members on it. I've got about seven different factories that I'm looking at from all over the world that we're going to see which one the best one that's going to work out for it. So let's get started on the back wall. Okay, now I've just laid out the, uh, the opening that is going to be for our window. So we're just going to connect all of these lines and then we should get a nice square opening and we'll I've cut the uh, the length of the sheet already to scale so we can put this glue right on and we wanted to leave just a little tiny lip down here so it'll go over the edge of the uh, the concrete work that we're doing so I'm gonna finish laying out the rest of this layout we're gonna cut this out this is real thin stock so we can cut this out fairly easily with a exacto knife and let me just finish this one off and I'll show you that and that will represent the opening for our glass so we'll cut this out right here we'll erase all these lines and we'll, we're gonna paint over all this anyway then we're going to go ahead and glue this beam on right to the edge, leave up uh, to the top edge of this, leaving just a little lip on the bottom. We also have one for the other side that we will glue into place. Then we will cut this to shape this I beam, and it is going to fit right on the edge of this with enough space on top that you'll get this type of look for it. So we can take the other cross member of the I-beam and they're all gonna line up perfectly like that. So we'll get a nice, uh, nice smooth uh, surface on that. So I've gotta do a little cutting right now and a little gluing and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. I was going ahead and test fitting the wall and you can see it stands up really well. What I forgot to do though was make the matching footer plate that uh, holds the I-beam up. So I had to go in there with my razor saw and just shave off just enough to fit that piece of plastic underneath it. Have not done it on this side yet, but it was a simple process to do. And then we just put our little L-stock L right inside of there with the bolts once we finally get those in as well. And as you can see, the thing is standing all on its own and working really well. Well, as you can imagine, with all this angle iron and the tubing, we have a lot of rigidity going from top to bottom, so it's real strong that way. We don't have too much going this way because it's very thin stock. What I've done is I've taken some of the L angle and I've cut it to shape or size, excuse me, and we're going to uh, we're going to mount that into position above and below the window. And that'll kind of cover up part of our edge. And also, we're just going to leave it like, like a millimeter over the actual edge. So when we fit the glass in from the back, uh, it'll get covered up. We won't have any edges. Now, when I do the glass, too, I'm going to uh, use some strip styrene to break up the glass to make it look like it's individual panes rather than just one giant pane of glass, which would be kind of uh, not realistic at all. So with those glued in, we're going to get nice rigidity from side to side, and then we'll be able to mount it right onto our uh, platform. So here we have the wall fitted into place and actually it's even got a coat of paint on it and that was not intentional. What happened was right after I filmed the last scene, I spilt literally, oh, about a half a bottle of Tamiya's extra thin cement. I just opened this bottle too, knocked it over, spilled it all over on top of the wall, a bunch of other sheets of styrene and some other plastic. Now, 
I immediately got this outside to dry and did not touch any of this right here so we didn't mar or mess up the finish but what I had to do is to make sure there are a few lines back here on the back from my cutting board so we painted the whole back of it black which this is never gonna get seen anyway we also painted this black too for a shadow or not a shadow so that you can't see through the building all since we use fairly thin stock on it and then we just primered this side just you know a little bit on it we didn't go crazy on it yet because we're still gonna paint the wall probably a different color on it but since we had to do that I was just testing it out seeing that the wall fits really well we can glue that in that's gonna snug it up really well now I've also started to create the the brackets for the cross members on the I-beams we notched out the I-beam here and then we've attached two brackets to it just just now so I still have to do some cleanup on them and of course we're gonna put bolts on it as well but you can see there's one on either side and that should and there it goes fit right on top of that and that'll secure that one right to the edge and with the bolts on it I think it'll look pretty pretty interesting on it and once that is secured we will be able to go over and figure out where our uh, vertical supports are gonna go up and when we figure that out we'll notch that plastic out again put another bracket on and you can see we start to get the, the shape of our uh, of our factory now I am just taking some thin tube, or actually not tube, rod I should say, thin rod and we're just laying down electrical uh, conduit across the back of the, uh, the, of the building and you can see we've got one going down already that's going to come down to have an outlet down there so that they'll be able to plug things in and then we've got others that are just bypassing this little station moving on to you know what would be the next station over things like that I just think little details like that will make the wall look less plain and I'm even gonna look for a few um, old World War II posters that I had they're little miniature scale ones I used to have from Verlinden a long time ago hopefully I can find one of those two that we can paste up on the wall as well well, let me show you what I've gone and done. I've gone ahead and put the little box on the end down there, and we just drilled a, a few little holes, not all the way through, but just enough in that'll create when we put some wash on it to make it look like sockets. I've also put a piece of tubing through the back here to represent like a water line that would go back. Now, right now I'm in the process of gluing up the side supports. As you can see here uh, I decided to put them in right here on these edges so I'm going back through and cutting out the little bottoms and putting the connector plates and that's what that's gluing up right now once that's done drying I'll be able to put that other one in and we're doing the exact same thing on the other side to give it a little bit more stability and what I thought I would do real fast too is because a friend of mine Steve from value gear details brought me down a whole bunch of little cartons and crates that we will be able to put all over the place. And I'm just gonna kinda throw all of our stuff back in here right now, give you an idea how it's starting to look. We'll pull this out. There was our cabinet we built up, our table, which we can put up against the wall or move it around however we see fit. And then we have all of the crates, which we'll paint up obviously and get them all weathered and we can lay them all over our, our cabinets. The open ones like this can be on the top of the vehicle as if they're taking parts out. Uh, we can put some of our other tool parts around. We've got all of our tools to put on there. So you can see it's really starting to come together and I have lots and lots of crates. So I'll be able to fill that whole thing up. We've got spare, tie oh, spare wheels, road wheels that we'll be able to pile up. So we'll really, really make it look like it's a, you know, an active factory. The one thing I'm trying to work on right now is coming up with an idea for doing, now this piece is not attached, I, you can see it's rather rather flexible until we put some kind of bracing in here, so I just temporarily just place that piece there. But I am trying to come up with some kind of crane, maybe not a crane that would actually lift the turret on and off, but at least a small crane in here that would be able to lift off panels, lift out the engine out of here, because this is obviously like where there are, you know, tuning up the, not tuning up, but uh, assembling the engine, things like that, that we'd want some kind of overhead crane, maybe not like a 25 ton crane, but something big enough that's gonna be able to lift parts off on that. So I've been looking at lots and lots of pictures trying to figure that out. So we're gonna work on that a little bit right now. Okay, let me show you guys what I ended up coming up with. 
I've taken some channel stock, as you can see, some real fine one, and I've laid it across the top of both beams over in here. Then I created with uh, some of the square tubing, put a cap on each side, and then took some half rounds and glued them to the bottom to represent the wheels. And we cut them to shape so they should fit inside that channel. And there we go. Well, it did a minute ago. So that will go up on top of there, and we're making two of those that are going to fit inside those channels. And then going from side to side, we'll have a big I-beam, or maybe even two, that'll connect the two. And this will be the whole piece that'll slide back and forth. It'll also give it some rigidity to the, uh, the overhang that we've done. And then, of course, we can attach our winch anywhere on the line here and even make it go side to side. We can work on that as well. So what I'm going to do now is I've created two of these and we've got the piece of styrene that's the exact size. We gotta do some cleanup and sanding and all this stuff, but we're gonna glue those together and see if we can fit it into place. Okay, let's take a look at, uh, just kinda skipped ahead a little bit here, but it was mainly just painting that we've done. Now I sprayed the entire model, which is getting harder and harder to film because of its size right here on the camera, so hopefully you can see everything pretty well. I painted the entire bottom down here, or actually the entire model, with uh, Tamiya's gray primer. Sprayed everything down so we got rid of and got a nice coat of primer on it. Then on the back here, I've gone ahead and sprayed RLM gray from Tamiya. And in the bottom down here, we sprayed XF55 deck tan. And I think with a modeled effect that we have going over the gray, it makes a nice concrete work. Now this is a question I have for you guys, and you can leave a comment down below on it. I wasn't sure if I should start scoring expansion lines in the concrete. I know like in big factories now, they won't have those kind of expansion lines, but this is supposed to be a 30s and 40s factory, and I'm assuming they probably would have had expansion lines in the concrete. So if you know anything about that, leave a comment down below. If, no, if nothing else, if we don't, I might just put one or two expansion lines in it just to, just to break up the, that huge piece of concrete there. Now, this is the other thing I'm working on right now. I showed you earlier. This is the overhead crane. And I've done a little bit of the, well, I did the cross member and some extra bracing here and then some conduit. And then we took a piece from one of those Italeri kits and we're kind of using that as like the motor drive that's on it. So we put one on each side. It was a 50-50 type piece. Put that on there. This will lock right into the, uh, into the groove that we have there. And I'll kind of raise that up a tiny bit. And once we glue that in too, that is going to give a lot more rigidity to the entire frame that we have right here. So it still will move, of course, because it is just thin little members on it. But uh, we're still waiting on the, the glass. And then, of course, all the rivets. You saw all those little areas in through air, all this. I still have to do some more work on those. And as soon as we get the Ming rivets in, we're going to go ahead to town riveting all of this stuff together to make it look like a real factory. Okay, here we go, guys. Here is kind of a, a view of the entire piece that we have done so far. Kind of scan up a little bit. And this view is just showing possibilities that we have with taking all the boxes that we got from Steve and putting them all over the place. I started building up some of the Italeri stuff like the acetylene tanks, the tables, uh, just leaving, and then even this, I love this little thing back here. It's a little uh, vice, for a tabletop vice that's going to get painted up. It's got all that stuff's got to be sanded. I've just and painted, of course. I've just thrown it out in front of you guys just to show you what we're uh, what we're looking at right now. Now, I also found a bunch of propaganda posters that we will put around the back right here. Uh, I got those from an old set of Verlinden that I have. Um, they're stored away right now, but I do know where they are. So we will be putting propaganda posters up on the sides of the wall. Give it a little little color, things like that. So uh, that is going to complete uh, this update episode or part three of the Panther factory build. I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many, many more videos coming.